about the future of our planet. How do I know this? Because you have personally expressed your feelings both publicly and privately with myself and with those who you confide with on our social media sites. We realize that these feelings exist in many of us. They are stronger in some than in others, but we can't quite grasp the real source of our anxiety. There is one possible reason why we feel so anxious about our future. We've discussed it before, but sometimes we place it in the back of our memory because it seems too painful to dwell on. When we think about disasters, we usually consider the events that take place in our natural surroundings, such as storms and earthquakes, which have occurred since the dawn of time. But what about a possible pending global disaster, one which defies what humanity is accustomed to? Many of you sense that this is where we are heading. But we remain on pins and needles because the world powers have been sworn to secrecy, while the mainstream media has primarily focused on civil unrest rather than environmental instability. Although you may not be aware of this, governments do in fact take precautions for pending global disasters. For instance, dwell on these known facts and then consider why this is happening. It's the U.S. Space Shuttle launched its last mission in mid-2011, at the same time that NASA had completely abandoned its government-funded manned spacecraft program. That same year, the Svalbard Global Sea Vault was sealed. They then announced that they would allow the world to restart agriculture immediately following a global catastrophe. The anticipated collapse of the global financial system as governments would not be expected to pay back their debts, thus considered an economic reset for reasons not entirely known. Government organizations and the militaries ramped up efforts to build underground survival shelters and facilities across the globe. Are you aware that the demand for fortified shelters has skyrocketed just in the last three to five years? Why the rush? Do any of us know for sure? The construction of DUMB facilities has been going on for many years now and continues even today. The fact that the government is building these shelters mostly in remote, inhospitable areas, far from the maddening crowd, should have all of us asking serious questions. China has decided in just the past few years to quickly build subway complexes below most of their major cities which is very odd in terms of timing. The government also constructed a survival bunker capable of holding 200,000 chosen people. Russia announced the construction of 5,000 new nuclear bomb shelters that were required to be completed by the end of this year, 2016. Their subway system also had to be relocated deeper than needed for use as emergency shelters. And what about FEMA? Many of you already know of these reports and have commented that they are building camps and acquiring body bags, as well as stockpiling tons of dried food. In 2013, they publicly announced that citizens should acquire a long-term survival kit in case of a global emergency at the same time that the DHS was buying countless rounds of ammo. Why? Should we be asking serious questions? Yes, I really think the time has come to get a better grasp on what is going on. We deserve to know, not only for ourselves, but for all those we love and care about. So why all of these preparations? And what exactly is the rush in completing these objectives?
We know that solar activity will increase as the solar cycle moves into a maximum time frame in the coming years. There is talk that NASA is watching the sky for some sort of shock wave of energy to reveal itself in the very near future. An event so powerful that it could very well affect one third of humanity. You may ask yourself, is it possible for an event of such magnitude to take place? Consider that in this century, NASA actually recorded the largest pulsar wave to come in contact with our atmosphere in human recorded history. Scientists detected a flash of light from across the galaxy so powerful that it bounced off the moon and lit up the Earth's upper atmosphere. The flash was brighter than anything ever detected from beyond our solar system, and it lasted over a tenth of a second. NASA and European satellites and many radio telescopes detected the flash and its aftermath on December 27, 2004. The scientists said the light came from a giant flare on the surface of an exotic neutron star called a magnetar. The apparent magnitude was brighter than a full moon and all historical star explosions. The light was brightest in the gamma ray energy range far more energetic than visible light or x-rays and invisible to our eyes. NASA has a habit of predicting that the Sun may generate unprecedented solar storms for a lengthy period. They cannot accurately predict Earth's normal weather a week in advance and still somehow they claim to be able to do this with respect to unprecedented weather on the Sun and do it years in advance. So what they are saying is that they are more dependent on vulnerable computer technology now. But we had similar dependencies in 2001 and in 1990 when previous 11 year solar cycles hit. So what is different about the current cycle? Their solar prediction would almost suggest that they possess some sort of extra information that has not been currently stated. So this may be more accurate than any of us would have imagined. In October of this year, the President by executive order implemented a coordinated effort to begin within the next 120 days from the date of his order to prepare the nation for catastrophic space weather. The order was prepared and provided to the media on short notice. The proclamation by the President can be read in its entirety at the address listed here. One thing seems certain. Whatever is approaching the Earth People are taking notice and sharing what they have witnessed and observed with the technology that is afforded them. 